Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Welcome to GSMC, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello. How's it going? Um, I am back. I am here with more feel-good, positive stories to share with you today. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I hope you've been feeling positive and good. Um, lately, I feel like everyone's kind of eased up a little bit, and there's just... I guess, I guess we've kind of grown into the new normal, which is quite scary that this is our new normal as of right now, but I feel like everybody has kind of, kind of gotten to their, their new normal right now. I don't know if that's just me, but anyways, with all that being said, I'm here to bring you all feel good, positive stories, um, So yeah, let's just jump right into it. So I have definitely talked about this story a few times on this podcast. Um, You may have heard of Captain Tom Moore. So Captain Tom Moore, or Sir Captain Tom Moore now, is officially knighted for his $40 million fundraiser. Um, If you have missed this story throughout the pandemic so far, um... Captain Tom Moore literally walked, um, his garden, um, like across it basically, um, to raise money. And he raised quite a lot of money. So he raised $40 million. So he's a World War II veteran and everyone just fell in love with him, um, cause he was just raising so much money for healthcare workers that were, that are fighting the coronavirus for us, of course. But now, so last time we talked about the story, um, he, it was his birthday and he was turning, um, a hundred and he, you know, he wanted to celebrate his hundredth birthday, um, by doing a hundred laps of his garden. And then that turned into more laps and more laps, raising more money and therefore. So on his hundredth birthday, everyone kind of came together to celebrate it. Um, so he kind of got lots of praise from many people and there was a petition going around saying that people wanted him to be knighted for what he has been doing. Um, but on his birthday, he was not knighted, but now he has officially been knighted by the Queen of England in honor of his incredible campaign. So pretty cool. So literally over one month, um, he raised $40 million for NHS charities together. Um, That's a new Guinness World Record for money raised on behalf of the healthcare system. So pretty cool. They, on his birthday, he was prompted, um, or sorry, he was promoted from the rank of captain to honorary colonel um, in a letter that was presented by Lieutenant Colt Thomas Miller and then approved by the Majesty, uh, the Queen. So now there was so many people, there was more than a million people that signed the petition to have him knighted. Um, but on his birthday, like I said, you know, despite all the appreciation and praise that he was getting, he remained super, super humble during his presentation. And he just requested that the event would end with a round of applause for the healthcare workers. Um, but now, thanks to the special nomination from Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he was approved. And Queen Elizabeth II, just last week, um, he is now Captain Sir Thomas Moore. So, yeah, he was officially declared on social media. Millions of people have been using the hashtag, hashtag Sir Captain Tom Moore, just to celebrate this huge achievement. Um so he's the Prime Minister Johnson says, on behalf of everyone who has been moved by this incredible story, I want to say a huge thank you. He's a true national treasure. 
I'm, I don't know, I've been following this story since the very beginning, so it's pretty cool to see that the petition worked, and he has been knighted um, for his honorable um, campaign that he did. So I thought I'd set off this, the episode with that story, as I've talked about that a lot during uh, this pandemic. But now I want to uh, share a little bit of a toll survey with you. It says that half of Americans say that they grow more charitable every single year, and this is particularly towards first responders. So on average, Americans do 4.45 charitable acts every week. So about 200 charitable acts each year. Um, so a survey of 2,000 Americans basically they explored their thoughts on charity and they found that Americans are ready for the task of giving back and helping others. So basically, according to the results, over half of the respondents, about 55% have paid it forward to a complete stranger. Um, and they say that Americans are much more altruistic, um, than they get credit for. So 53% of the adults report that if someone in front of them in line at the drive-thru paid for their meal, they would happily pay for the person's meal behind them. Um, 45% said that they would pay for that meal, even if it was double the price of the meal they originally ordered. Um, and they would be more likely to pay for someone's meal if the, um, recipient of their kindness was a first responder. So, basically found that three in four Americans, 76%, say that they would gladly pay for a first responder's meal if they saw them at a restaurant. Um, and yeah, so basically this survey really kind of focused on first responders or shined light onto the first responders um, and that Americans would do a lot more just to show appreciation for them. So the director of brand development at Cooper Tires, who uh, constructed this poll, Jessica uh, Egerton says with public service recognition week falling in May now is the perfect time to recognize and honor our first responders so this company has teamed up with the Gary Sinus Foundation for the second consecutive year to give back to first responders by donating new tires to fire stations and EMT departments um, that are in need across the country so they're just making sure that they can serve their communities and stay safe while doing so so more than 7 in 10 of those that were surveyed agree that they wish their community was doing much more to assist first responders in some way. 77% said that they would go of their way to thank a first responder if they saw one in public. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. I guess a lot of, you know, a lot of people do uh, paying it forward, and that's what this survey kind of demonstrates, all the paying it forward. Um, but yeah, I guess the average respondent will volunteer for four separate times and donate about $178 to charity every year is what it conducted. But they also say that three in four people, so 75%, say that they feel a lot better after donating or volunteering for a cause. Because it's not just, you know, you're not, it goes both ways. You feel good both ways. Um, over three quarters of Americans, 78%, uh, always make an effort to give back to their local communities. And many find it super important that they still in that they instill these values into their children. So yeah, there you have it. Now I have um, the top 10 ways Americans have been giving back to their community. Um, so donated to food drives, 46%. Donated to local charity, 44%. Um, supported local farmers, 38%. Donated blood, 38%. Participated in a local fundraiser, walk or race, 30%. Taken part in community cleanup, 28%. Volunteered at a local senior center, 25%, joined a community garden, 24%, served meals at a food bank, 21%, and number 10, volunteered as a firefighter, 20%. Um, yeah, 55% of those polled said that they were more terrible now than they were six months ago. Um, so there you have it. Uh, Americans want to give because it feels good both ways, and especially for those first responders. Now, my next story is about a pretty interesting uh, 12-year-old boy um, and what he has done to help with COVID-19 protection. So he is homeschooled. He's only 12 years old. His name is Mizan, and he designed a COVID-19 protection device, and he calls it the Safe Touch Pro. 
So, um, he is from San Francisco and it did, I guess it did not take him long at all, um, to invent his own solution for this problem. Um, he wanted to avoid germs in public during the pandemic. Um, so he said that he originally saw his parents kind of fumbling with their sleeves whenever they wanted to open a door. So he designed like a hook like tool and he perfected the prototype on his 3D printer. So he calls it the Safe Touch Pro. Um, it has the ability to punch numbers on keypads for when, whenever you're on ATM, catch re- register, or gas stations. He says, I really made it for my parents and now it's helping everybody. So he is definitely not the first one to dream up of this ty- type of advice, but the smart 12 year old boy um, did his research and he actually provided an upgrade to anyone else out there. So he made his tool from plant based plastic that is germ resistant. So he said, I wanted to make it make sure it was good for the environment and the virus can't survive on it. So there you go. He sells them for fourteen ninety nine. Um, you can literally search up the Safe Touch Pro. There's a website and there's dozens. He says that he gets dozens of orders daily. Um, he's been homeschooled for the past three years, um, and he says that he wants a career in maybe aviation um, or technology, some type of thing. Um, he's pretty inventive, and this is what he came up with: the Safe Touch Pro. It's a pretty cool device. All right. Well, it's time for a little bit of a break, but don't go anywhere. When I get back, I have more feel-good stories to share with you. People are doing things across uh, across the country, you know, across the world, really, just to help one another during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, so I have some stories sharing that. I also have a pretty cool statistics of Americans and what they have realized during this pandemic. So don't go anywhere. We will be back shortly. Thank you. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project that's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar.
to GSMC, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe, and I am back with more feel-good stories to share with you today. So I mentioned that there's people all across uh, the U.S. and across the world that are doing so many things to help one another uh, during this pandemic, as I've been talking a lot about these kind of stories on this podcast lately. Um, but I wanted to share this next one. So people are installing portable hand washing sinks for the homeless um, just in cities across the U.S. So portable sinks have been installed basically across the United States just to help the homeless uh, people wash their hands amidst all of this coronavirus coronavirus craziness, as I like to call it. Um, so over the past two months, uh, a non-profit uh, organization, it's a Georgia-based organization called Love Beyond Walls, um, is dedicated to helping the homeless, and they've been setting up dozens of hand-washing stations in areas uh, popularly visited by homeless. So Terrence Lester is the founder um, who had been homeless himself as a teenager. Um, So he says that, you know, he started the Love Sinks In campaign with the hopes of supporting neglected people living in poverty during this pandemic. He says people would say things like, I'm fearing I'll contact the coronavirus because I have nowhere to wash my hands. So thankfully, um, he's been able to scale up some uh, some operations thanks to the support of a Grammy Award winning artist, um, Lecrae. Um, it's actually friends of him as well. So they joined forces um, in March. I talked about this story, I believe, on the podcast on an episode. And they started to set up several sinks in areas across uh, the city of Atlanta. Um, And then they were all sanitized three times every single day as well, a part of this um, program. So now Love Beyond Walls has also teamed up with other homeless charities to install sinks in cities like Birmingham, Austin, Columbus, uh, New Orleans, Baltimore, and New York City. So there you go. Um, pretty cool. They actually were surprised with a $10,000 donation that will help pay for the installation of 50 more portable sinks. So keep an eye open for those. I think it's pretty cool to be helping out everyone we can during this time. Um, and speaking of that... So young people um, all over the world are volunteering um, themselves to basically catch coronavirus um, so they can help others in the future, which is pretty cool. So scientists um, around the world are basically on a race to try to develop a vaccine for COVID-19. Thousands of young people now have volunteered to willing willingly contract the virus in order to accelerate this research program. So it's a campaign called One Day Sooner, and it's an initiative um, that's kind of basically rallying for healthy, low-risk adults to participate in a human challenge trial um, for developing a vaccine. So typical medical trials test the safety and efficiency of a vaccine by administering the treatment to several thousand people and comparing the outcomes to a control group of patients who have not received the same treatment. Um, So they say in these traditional trials, after receiving the treatment, participants return to their homes and their normal day lives so as to test the treatment under real world conditions. Since only a small portion of these participants may encounter the disease, it may take a large number of participants and a good deal of time for these trials to reveal differences between the vaccine and placebo groups. Um, But it's pretty cool. So young people are volunteering to catch the virus so they can try to speed up the process for the vaccines. So an HCT trial, on the other hand, so this is, you can only require 100 participants uh, to willingly contract the infection, and then researchers can immediately begin to test the vaccine's efficiency. In the past, these trials have been conducted on treatments for um, different types of fevers, smallpox, all those types of things. So although um, coronavirus HCT would obviously come with its own risks. There are a few ways that researchers can minimize the dangers of the trial. So basically, the trial would likely only recruit volunteers between the ages 20 and 45 who have no underlying health risks. And then volunteers would also probably, you know, be the adults with a high risk of contracting the virus outside of the trial anyways. So finally, study participants would be isolated in highly controlled environments under constant observation. Um, If infection is detected, they would be provided with excellent medical treatment, um, 
hopefully the pharmaceutical treatments will also be available by the time a study is conducted. So adults who have signed up as a volunteer for the One Day Sooner campaign are not currently bound to any legal obligation to follow through on their offer. So the initiative has already been flooded with support. Um, they Since the day one that they began this, um, there was almost 24,000 adults across 102 countries have expressed interest in the HCT trial. So the One Day Sooner campaign um, basically became very quick and the accelerating a vaccine's approval by one day could actually save as much as 7,000 lives. Just by speeding up development by three months could save as many as a half a million lives. So if you are interested in being a part of the One Day Sooner program, you can search that up on the internet and see how you can be a part of that if that uh, is interesting to you. Um, but preliminary studies from two different COVID-19 vaccine trials in the UK and the US have shown promising results in safely producing antibody reactions in humans. And scientists are increasingly suggesting that an HCT trial could dramatically accelerate the treatment's approval while simultaneously weeding out unsuccessful vaccines. Um, there you go. And just earlier this month, the World Health Organization released new guidelines on how HCT trial could be ethically justified in the case of a global pandemic. So these guidelines emphasize that the participants would have to be thoroughly informed of the risks involved in the trials. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you do want to be a part of that, you want to try and make it one day sooner and be a part of that initiative, definitely head over to that website and see how you can be a part of it. Now, on the entertainment side of this whole pandemic, people have been releasing um, lots of different videos and things online to try to keep people entertained. And now, um, <laughs> last week, Disney has announced that they will be officially publishing the critically acclaimed Broadway play to their Disney Plus streaming service 15 months ahead of schedule. They just want to do this so they can keep people entertained during quarantine. So, they will be releasing Hamilton to try to keep, keep people entertained as possible. Um, the film production of Hamilton was set to hit streaming services on October 15th, 2021. Now, the movie will be available to viewers on July 3rd, just the day before America Independence Day. Um, and yeah, so that movie, which was produced from segments of the hit play, they were all filmed at Richard Rogers Theatre in June of 2016. Um, and it was directed uh, by the musical stage director Thomas Kale. So, if you want to check that out, that will be available on July 3rd. The musical's writer and lead actor, uh, Lynn Miranda, welcomed the newly announced release date on Twitter saying that he has never been so happy and nervous for anything in his life. Um, since the Broadway star published a teaser clip of the movie's release to social media, it's been viewed more than 4 million times just on Twitter alone. But we know how social media works. It is probably crazy all over the place. So there you have it. If you were a Broadway fan or you just need an extra thing to watch in quarantine, July 3rd, you will be able to watch Hamilton. They are releasing it 15 months early. Pretty cool, I have to say. All right, it is time for another break. Um, but when we get back, um, I'm actually going to be giving you some stats. I mentioned some things that some Americans have kind of realized during the COVID-19 crisis, as well as some more stats about um, traffic deaths and how they have fallen in 2019 as well. And then I'm going to be telling you some story about some quick thinking from a police officer and... I have a cool little thing to end on that Ikea has released for all of us that you might find interesting in your quarantine times right now. So stay tuned. We will be right back with lots more to share with you. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, for an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. 
and then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to GSMC, America Still Beautiful Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Okay, we are back, and I thought I would start right now with the uh, the statistics, the little survey that happened of the transformation 64% of Americans have experienced during COVID-19 crisis, and that is the eco wake-up call that people have experienced during this time. So, two thirds of Americans have said that they have had an eco wake-up call since the start of COVID-19. Um, so, a poll of 2,000 Americans re- revealed that 64% have had a moment since the pandemic started where they realized they need to be more eco-friendly. So, this might kind of, you know, be a result of just kind of paying closer attention to our lives um, as we all are right now. I feel like we've become so much more aware of ourselves and our surroundings and what our lives consist of right now. So 70% said that being home more due to COVID-19 made them more aware of the eco-unfriendly behaviors. Um, so these eco wake-up calls included, you know, just becoming more of Wear of wasting food, uh, using products more sparingly, and being more careful about where they buy meat as well. Um, other behaviors might have been influenced just by the pandemic. Um, however, you know, they aren't going to go away when COVID-19 does. So, commissioned by Avocado Green Mattress and conducted by one poll, uh, this survey of 81% of respondents plan to keep their newfound eco-friendly habits. Uh, the top way that they're going to be doing this is to continue to recycle more often. So about 55% said that. Um, and then to also reduce the amount of paper products that they use, 44% said that. Uh, 42% of those also said that they plan to work from home one day per week instead of commuting, um, just in order to reduce their carbon footprint. And another thing that working from home has so many benefits that 48% of workers would even take a pay cut to continue uh, working from home forever. I've heard that a lot. A lot of people are trying to stay at home and work from home, which does have a lot of uh, environmental benefits to it. Um, They're also planning to be composting more often, 37% said that, and take public transportation more frequently, 35%. So these are just, you know, habits that 
we can do quite easily that, you know, I think this pandemic has just made us realize. Um, one third, so 32% plan to continue wearing a face mask even after receiving the all clear from the CDC. Um, they're saying that we're living in unprecedented times. Um, so now more than ever, we've been presented with an opportunity to reflect on and reassess our current way of living as a society and make other strides towards adapting more thoughtful, sustainable habits. So COVID-19, you know, it hasn't just changed our habits, but it's really affected the way that we think about the world, I think, and the way that we see it. So there you have it. Lots of people are having those eco wake up calls. So I just thought I would give you the little list here of eco-friendly changes that respondents have made since COVID-19. So reduce the amount of food that they're wasting, 44%. Use paper products more sparingly, 43%. Be more careful where they buy meat, 38%. I mentioned all of those already. But now shopped more sustainably, 36%. Recycled more often, 36%. Reduced water usage, 35%. Video chatting instead of traveling to see friends and family, 29%, reduced my commute, 28%, and used time to read books instead of solely streaming shows, 25%, and lastly, started using a community garden or their own garden, 19%. So there you go, the eco wake-up call so many people have been experiencing. I think it's just because we're so aware of our surroundings right now, so it's hard not to be aware of the environment, I think, at this time. So it's a good thing to distract ourselves and to focus on. Um, now I want to talk about a different poll. So U.S. traffic deaths fell in 2019 for the third straight year, even though the overall road use has increased. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration released um, estimates for the 2019 data on highway crashes, and they showed a continued decline in the traffic uh, fatalities. So the federal agency previously reported declines in traffic deaths during 2018 and 2017. So these are the latest estimates um, that are continuing the downward trend. So drivers down 3%, passengers down 4%, mortal, motorcyclists down 1%, pedestrians down 2% and cyclists down 3%. So overall, V represents an estimated decrease of about 440 deaths, down about 1.2% over the reported uh, 36,000 fatalities in 2018. And even though traffic miles actually rose almost 1%. So these estimates are reflected in this data. Um, The fatality rate per 100 million miles traveled would be the second lowest um, recording data uh, in the fatal crash data. So this new data also allows that 9 out of 10 regions across the country have experienced the downturn in deaths in 2019. And last year, the department established an uh, intermodel truck and bus working group that focuses on increasing safety and reducing truck and bus related crashes. All right. Now, my next story is about some quick thinking from a police officer. And it's kind of funny. I thought this was a unique story, so I had to share. So... (laughs) A peacock was on a runway. He was he was running away, and they were trying to catch him. And the quick thinking of a police officer was able to capture this runaway peacock. Um, he downloaded a mating call app to his iPhone. Pretty cool. So um, a peacock was found wandering the streets of Boston and was returned home thanks to a police officer. So a team of Boston Police Department officers were just patrolling around um, the Roxbury district last week. And then they got approached by a citizen who said that an animal may have escaped from the nearby Franklin Park Zoo. So they started to track down this critter that they say they say they arrived at scene and were met by an extremely large, slightly intimidating and quite beautiful male peacock. So the peacocks at Franklin Park Zoo are free roaming. And while they are typically wander throughout the zoo, it is currently mating season and it's possible that he ventured out looking for love in search of a female peacock. So thankfully, one of the officers were managed to kind of find um find the bird so they found them and then they downloaded a bird calling app on his phone so that he could play the peacock mating call through his speakers um and it worked so the officers successfully lured the bird into this fenced in yard so that they could keep in check until animal control arrived to transport the peacock back to the zoo 
So the Sioux spokeswoman said, Upon learning of the peacock's adventure, our animal care team at the zoo worked quickly with the Boston Police Department and Animal Control to recover the peacock, and we're happy to report he is now back at the zoo and doing well. Pretty, I thought that's quick thinking, to download that on your phone. I don't know if I would have thought of that, but that's why we have phones. They're here for everything, even to help us lure uh, peacocks into your cop car, I guess. (laughs) Now, I thought I would end on a little bit of a silly note. Um, IKEA has released the instructions. I guess this isn't silly for everybody, but IKEA has released instructions on how to build the best six blanket forts for your home in quarantine. So as we know, uh, building IKEA furniture isn't the best part of IKEA furniture, to say the least, but they just released a, a, a basically six different types of blanket fold forts um, that you can you can use from things from your own house to build these forts while you're stuck in quarantine. I think I'm going to have to do it. Um, so go over to Ikea and check them out. There's literally six different types. So there's the house type, the castle type, the fortress, um, the wigwam, the cave, and the camping tent. Um, and these are all kind of things from your house, I believe that you can all use um, if you have them. And so there's six different types depending on kind of, I guess, what kind of stuff you have at your house as well. But they literally just give you instructions on how to build your blanket fort. And it's quite smart. Blanket forts are not the easiest thing to build all the time. But it is definitely a fun thing to do while you're in quarantine and you want to have a movie night or something. Definitely build a fort and hang out with it. Kind of just makes things a little bit more exciting, change things up a little bit. So I thought I would add that in. If you go over to Ikea, you can just search it up and you will definitely find the six different types of blanket forts that you can build. Hopefully they are easier to build than some of the furniture Ikea um, releases. (laughs) We all all struggle with building. All right, that is all of the good feel good positive stories to share with you today thank you so much for listening to gsmc america still beautiful podcast brought to you by the gsmc podcast network i am your host Alyssa joe i had an amazing time sharing these stories it is the best part of my day just to talk with you guys for 30 minutes about all positive news. How could it get any better? So thank you so much for being here. Please do not forget to hit that subscribe button to like and follow us on social media and leave a five-star review. It's greatly appreciated and I look forward to more positive feel-good stories to share with you next time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and even even weird news. The GSMC Podcast Network has you covered. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast. 